other nerds, I've got the results from our latest focus sessions right here. And I'm Dr. Jordan Brady, and I'll be walking through a few of these answers, if that's okay with you. Whatever. Okay, great. Well, welcome to another episode of Your Brain on Crack, the show rigorously reviewed by test audiences, and the only show on Crack where I have a mustache now, unless, unless you think it's a bad idea. As long as I'm getting paid. No matter how many times I revise my spec script for Transformers Eroticons, I probably won't ever become a real Hollywood big shot. But that doesn't mean that a fart-sucking Philistine like me or you or him... I'll allow it. It doesn't mean we can't influence how other major movie franchises turn out. At the end of the day, movies need to make money, so Hollywood execs aren't above bowing to the whims of the unwashed masses. I mean, for example... <laughs> Have you ever wanted to see Kevin Costner's penis? If so, please like, comment, and subscribe. And also, you were probably a mom in 1993. What do you think? Look good. And you're also not alone because Costner also wants you to see his untouchables. You got nothing, nothing. And if you were a man, you would have done it now. During the filming of 1999's For the Love of the Game, Costner shot a scene wherein he showered with his dick out to show how much he just really loves the game. I was just trying to be Manly. From the beginning, producers were pretty wary of including the scene as it automatically gave the film a rock-hard R rating and Costner's contract specified a circumcised PG-13. Still, like a frat boy with an iPhone, the producers went ahead and stuck that dong out there to see what the response was. But like most dick pics, their reactions were humiliating. I give it to you. Thanks, job. Test audiences giggled at the non-comedic scene, and one viewer asked the question I ask every morning when I wake up, do we really need to see Kevin Costner's penis? Again? You want me to have a look at it? The scene was ultimately cut due to studio concerns about content and, uh, length, and an engorged- Phrasing. Enraged Costner accused the producers of lacking real courage and claimed he didn't want to collaborate with people who make decisions based not on taste, Phrasing. but on some kind of instinct about an audience. It just flies in the face of who he is, which is an easy thing for him to say because there was a whole lot more flying in everybody else's face. Kiss that bitch goodbye! <laughs> Snakes on a Plane was probably never gonna win Best Picture or make a billion dollars, but during the early stages, the film's producers still wanted to keep the appeal as broad as possible. Enough is enough! I have had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday plane! At one point, they even briefly changed the name to Pacific Flight 121 in an attempt to trick your senile grandpa into buying a ticket. Is that a PlayStation or Xbox? Samuel L. Jackson forced them to change the name back because the man understands movies, damn it! But the plan was still to play it safe and release this stupid film about flight attendants battling loose vipers as a fun for like 30% of the family PG-13 flick. But a few fans had other ideas. Specifically, they wanted Samuel L. Jackson to swear more. Also boobs. Go on. The film's most famous line about certain snakes that want to do terrible things to your mother was never in the original script. That bit of cinematic magic was birthed by two friends who worked together at a Maryland audio company. They got so excited about Snakes on a Plane's potential, they created a fake audio-only trailer featuring a Samuel L. Jackson impersonator. And the reaction to this trailer, and in particular that now infamous line, was overwhelmingly positive. Oh, praise us to the PlayStation! Producers, eager to capitalize on the film's sudden R-rated attention, went ahead and ordered five days of reshoots to add additional gore, nudity, and of course, F-bombs. Like so there you go. All movies are improved with 30% more boobs, 60% more swears, and 120% more Samuel L. Jackson. It's a recipe for success. Yeah! <laughs> Who's your daddy now, bitch? Mm. The stop motion Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is one of those Christmas specials that will probably air every single year until the planet explodes or until they release a live action remake with a computer generated Hermes so realistic our love lives just crumble. <laughs> A big reason for the film's enduring popularity is the heartwarming way it resolves all of its myriad subplots. Rudolph becomes an important addition to the sleigh team, Hermie becomes the world's sexiest elf dentist, and the misfit toys are rescued from their island of eternal loneliness and shame. Except the film wasn't always that happy, it was actually kind of grim. No, well, if that's all!
What? See, when the film first aired back in 1964, the makers of Rudolph didn't give two wet ginger snaps about those misfit toys. The original cut basically saw Rudolph arrive on the island, take note of the crappy inhabitants, and then wander away for other adventures. The misfit toys were just a strange, entirely forgettable pit stop on Rudolph's quest for purpose. My name is... Don't tell me. Jack. No, Charlie. However, many, presumably young, viewers wrote into NBC demanding to know what happened to the silly King Moon Racer and the psychologically broken dolly. Wake up! Don't you know it? it's time to come out? NBC executives were surprised because they, like Rudolph, couldn't imagine anybody caring about something so not popular or profitable. Oh, I want a pistol and shoot some jelly! But they capitulated to the angry masses and ordered additional material be shot, and every broadcast since has included the new scene in which Santa saves the toys. So only like one year's worth of kids spent Christmas Eve wondering if they too would one day be unloved and forgotten because they weren't cute enough. <laughs> Christmas? Why am I such a misfit? Sylvester Stallone has built an entire career out of doing things on film that are clearly impossible for him in real life, like speaking clearly. Yes! I love John Conan the Barbarian! You'd think audiences would just accept any crazy idea Stallone has at this point, like, I don't know, flying a tank into a helicopter, which is the thing he actually did. And yet, when the trailer for Cliffhanger included a scene where Sloan leaps some 40 feet from one cliff to another, audiences the world over sat upright in their chairs and collectively said, Nah, that's a bullshit. Nah, that's a bullshit. To appease audiences, whose suspension of belief was as tenuous as Stallone's grip in every third cliffhanger scene, <gasps> producers tried to edit the jump into something more believable. But when I say try, remember this was 1993, and the team had originally literally hurled Stallone's burly ass from cliff to cliff using old-fashioned stunt techniques. That meant, short of flying Stallone back to the Rocky Balboa Mountains, the only available option was employing rudimentary CGI to artificially bring the cliffs closer. It's probably the only time in history CGI was expressly used to make something less awesome. Over the years, Denzel Washington has taken on many powerful roles, forcing audiences to confront the nature of racism. He's been slurred at more times than anybody could count, and he's even been whipped on screen. But there's still one racially challenging thing he rarely gets to do. Kiss a white lady. Where you going, boy? Despite starring in some 30 plus movies, Denzel's only ever kissed a white woman in two of them, Malcolm X and Flight. And I need a Cocoa Puff. A what? That's a pretty low count for one of the most kissable actors of all time in an industry populated by mostly white actresses. So what's the deal? Is it because the white man won't risk letting his women kiss the sexiest man alive? And I mean, yes, I'm scared of that, but no, that's not the reason. I'm banging your wife. Good. Back in 1989, when Denzel screen tested his sixth film, The Mighty Quinn, audiences straight up freaking booed a love scene he shared with Mimi Rogers. Not because Mimi and Denzel weren't naked enough, they hated seeing Washington mash faces with a white woman. And it wasn't who you think either. According to Washington, the hecklers were mostly black women. An embarrassed Denzel asked producers to cut the scene, and from that moment on, he took it upon himself to kiss as few white lips as possible. As you might expect, this news was tragic for his co-stars. I can't breathe. The sisters will never forgive me, he explained when the team floated the idea of him kissing Julia Roberts in the Pelican Brief, much to her very thirsty dismay. Oh my God. Oh my and the same thing happened when Kelly Lynch pleaded for a smooch in 1995's Virtuosity. There were also rumors that Washington demanded a love scene be cut from Man on Fire. The fact that many of these scenes were cut rather than just never filmed at all shows that Denzel has continued to struggle with this for decades. It really sucks that one prejudiced incident could haunt one of our greatest actors for this long. And to waste one of those rare kisses on freaking Flight? The movie where he interchangeably uses cocaine and alcohol to cancel each other out so he could fly an airplane upside down? This is terrible! <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> okay, so I see that 69% of respondents would be okay seeing Costner uncut. 100% of you said that you would press your lips against Denzel Washington if given the chance, and you all gave Eroticons a failing score again. What if I could get Denzel Washington to kiss Costner's? Yes! Oh my god, I, uh, sorry, I didn't realize you were still here.
<laughs> Gotta get paid. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, how about you could see Kathy on your way out to get some drugs for your anal clamping. I certainly don't have that, but I will take the drugs. It's important to note where the period is is in, in, in MED, because this is a master's of education <laughs> and not a medical doctor. People frequently confuse those things. I am actually those things. <laughs>